Silent Hill series fell silent after the release of Silent Hill 4, partially due to the lukewarm reception it was afforded, but also because at this point, the original team behind the series, the legendary Team Silent, chose to go their separate ways. Seemingly orphaned in the breakup were any hopes of new entries in the series. Their absence was made even more conspicuous by the advent of next-gen video game consoles in 2005 and 2006. Everyone began to wonder if the franchise was truly dead, even as the recent film adaptation became a success at the box office. The franchise was simultaneously at the top of the world and the bottom of the shit heap. Then, as 2007 drew to a close, a little PSP game called Silent Hill Origins dropped into our laps. The story opened with a seemingly normal trucker named Travis making a run through Silent Hill when, shock, he slams on the brakes to avoid hitting a creepy little girl. If this sounds familiar, it's only because it's the opening to Silent Hill 1, Silent Hill the Movie, Silent Hill the Musical, and Silent Hill the three-part lecture on the eating habits of agrarian indigenous peoples of the mountains of Zaire. Explain to me why roads even go through Silent Hill anymore, if you would. If people hear enough bad things about a place, presumably people will stop fucking going there. Look at New Jersey, for Christ's sake. The game was called Silent Hill Origins in the West and Silent Hill Zero in Japan, but a more apt descriptor is Silent Hill Deja Vu, which isn't to say that the game is bad, it's actually a fairly well executed, albeit completely by the numbers entry in the series. One excellent addition to the franchise was Travis's propensity for fighting with his hands and feet when his weapons inevitably broke. Why would they break, you ask? Well, not to worry, as weapons will only ever break if you get the batshit idea into your head to actually fucking use them. Which, I suppose, makes more sense than the fact that Travis is somehow able to lug around all this useless shit in the first place. At one point in the game, I was literally hauling around an IV stand, two color TVs, three radios, and a partridge in a pear tree, which would be fucking awesome if I could hit a monster more than one fucking time without a TV snapping in half. Who the fuck made these flimsy-ass TVs anyway, Sony? I can only assume they're made out of the same shit that cars are made out of in Grand Theft Auto 4, adhering to the sneeze-at-it-and-it-breaks school of physics. Either way, it's fucking irritating. And someone clearly needs to take a class where the principle of material density is explained because, and bear with me here, I was under the mistaken assumption that a microwave constructed of metal was considerably harder to break than a man's fist further enhancing my theory that Travis is constructed of living tissue over a metal endoskeleton, which explains his acting as much as anything else. Nice vest, by the way, douchebag. That from the Marty McFly collection? The game features the ability to shift from real world into the nightmare world simply by using a mirror. Too bad James didn't use that fucking trick at the beginning of Silent Hill 2, eh? Might have saved that poor bastard some time in therapy. Aside from this somewhat tacked-on gimmick, the level design is fairly straightforward. Run around, test every door to see if the lock is broken, find key and or special puzzle item progress to next stage. Like I said, by the numbers. The primary novelty of the game is that it's on the PSP, so don't expect anything really earth-shattering and you'll enjoy it. Three and a half bloody rabbit heads. It was around this time that some trailers were released for what at the time was called Silent Hill 5. Most fans of the series got at least a half chub when they saw the descriptions of the game. The initial synopsis explained that the game's main character, Alex Shepard, had recently returned from a tour of duty, presumably in Iraq or some such. This is going to be fucking rad, we thought to ourselves. After all, Silent Hill takes your mental issues and projects them in living, breathing reality. Can you imagine what kind of fucked up shit an Iraq war veteran is going to dream up? In theory, that would be awesome. In practice, well, those who have played this game know that isn't exactly what this game is all about. If you haven't played it, I won't spoil it for you, but needless to say, the game's twist pretty much stomps on that idea and exchanges it for a simple, predictable twist that's essentially ripped off from Silent Hill 2. Really, that's this game's main issue. From a story standpoint, it's simply not confident enough in itself to be something different, so it falls into the trap of emulating the series' past glories. The Red Pyramid antagonist from Silent Hill 2 even makes an appearance. Jesus in a cocktail dress, does this guy ever get around? He's like Silent Hill's answer to Super Mario. Oh, oh shit, did I just jinx it? Hold on, I have to take a quick break to fall to my fucking knees and pray that he isn't a playable character in the new Smash Brothers. Alright, I'm back. Hopefully sacrificing Hideo Kojima to Lucifer does the trick. Gameplay is where Silent Hill Homecoming really excels, surprisingly. The combat is much improved, although Alex's combat prowess makes no goddamn sense, given the revelations at the end of the game. I mean, compared to James or Heather, this guy can throw the fuck down. I also like how the enemies take battle damage during the course of the fight. It seems like a no-brainer addition to a horror game, but for some reason it took six games to finally make it in. Whatever. Of course, you won't really have time to focus much on this, because you'll be far too busy being 
scraped in every hole by even the weakest enemies in the game. Now, before you accuse me of being a wuss who's just whining because he isn't any good at the game, this is my achievement for beating the game on the highest difficulty. It is possible. I've done it. But fuck what a hassle! I especially hate these little cunts. Not only do they look like they belong on a Tool album cover, they're basically impossible to properly time in a fight. The game's AI is random as shit. Every fight with those fuckers is like playing WarioWare. It's simply not possible to prevent taking damage in every single fight with them, which is why you never, ever use your shotgun rounds except on them. Trust me, no one else is worth it. The graphics are superb. No Silent Hill game yet has captured the atmosphere of Silent Hill Homecoming. Even Shattered Memories doesn't touch this. The way the fog looks, the dilapidated state of the buildings, the way your piddly, useless flashlight casts menacing shadows through the environment, it's a thing of beauty. If nothing else, it makes me glad that there is a next-gen Silent Hill game. It's the little common-sense touches that make this game worthwhile. Stuff like, like being able to switch to first-person very briefly to survey your surroundings. Multiple dialogue choices and conversations that dynamically affect the game's ending, weapons that don't snap in half after three fucking uses. All in all, I've actually come to really like this game. It gets four Robbies, a great game that deserved better than it received from the gaming press. Coming up in the third and final chapter of the Rageaholic Silent Hill retrospective, I discuss the series' most recent chapter, 2009 Silent Hill Shattered Memories. And I finally get to do a good old-fashioned movie review when we tackle Silent Hill the motion picture. Again, I have some very important news to address with regard to the sequel to the film, so you'll want to definitely catch that. The third part should already be up even as you watch this, so do it now, you motherless fucking whores. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. Last I saw him, he was passed out drunk on the ground. He seemed fine. Can I go now? Wow, Alex. You're a terrible liar. Now tell me where he is. Well, you're not going to be able to ask him anything. He's dead. Dead? Shit!